we were probably approached by virtually every major label on some level. Some of which were like, you know, just someone saying like, hey, can we have lunch? And us saying, hey, no, or, you know, or, I mean, never rudely, but it's like there's just nothing to talk about, you know. The corporations or big money gigs always somehow knew instinctively not to approach me. So it wasn't as if I had to necessarily refuse. I was never drawn to it, and they were never drawn to me. I think my reputation preceded me from 1977 on. It could have been because I think one time when a record company tried to not pay me, I threatened to throw that first their stereo and then them out the window, and I was quite serious. And we did turn out uh, one relatively explicit buyout offer, which would have meant a lot of money and so on. And I don't object to that. And I'm not all that anti-commercial. I just decided that uh, that the right way to do this was as uh, as a labor of love, and just to keep plugging away. Now we're uh, doing okay, even despite the downturn. And I'm just glad we did it this way. I'm not really driven by money. Money is like the last thing that I think about when I'm writing. I've never written thinking like, you know, oh, this will make me a bunch of money. If I was thinking about money, you know, I'd be, I'd be writing cartoons instead of, you know, writing about straight males and gay bars, you know, and strippers and, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't, I don't think I write the kind of stuff that's, that's heavily commercial at all. I've had to call my own press. I've had to book my own stuff. We don't have a record company. And um, I want to keep it that way. But there's also times where we were offered really, you know, ridiculous amounts of money, absurd amount of money, because they were trying to get our attention, like, you know, because they were saying, like, we should talk about it because, you know, we'd like to do, you know, we're talking about a million dollar deal here or something, you know, and you're like, we're just, but the thing is, it's like, what they didn't take into account was that I'm coming from, you know, the early 80s, like, for me, it was no fucking joke. It was like, this was, like, it isn't a radical point of view. And I feel like that what we created was something, like, when I don't mean we, the band, or we, the label, or even we, Washington, D.C., I'm talking about we, like, all these people, all these kids and young people around the United States who were, like, who created this network, you know, uh, we made something that was like, in spite of major, it was a parallel community. It was legitimate, authentic music that didn't have to deal with all that nonsense. And um, this was not, it was not something that was for sale. And you can't really do the things you want to do or the way you want to do things if you have to actually make art or do anything for somebody else or if you're being paid to do it for somebody else. That means that you're doing it for them and you're actually not purely doing the art how you express it or how you want to do it. I just reached a point where I, I had to put everything I had into it and try to make it work for me because I knew that I really wouldn't be happy doing anything else. I used to show my work in other galleries in uh, Washington, D.C. and New Orleans. Um, but I got sick of dealing with somebody in the middle to sell my work, so that's why I opened up my own gallery. Major labels in general, they've really succeeded in their war. They found, they've totally corporatized punk rock and revolution. Because the major labels are so corrupt and, and, uh, and obviously just in the way of the whole thing. I mean, the distribution channel's gone. You know, there is no distribution channel anymore. It's all. It's all um, bytes, and it's you know there's no there's no need to push around a little silver disc anymore. It's just it's not necessary. At this point in my life, I prefer not to be on one. But if I were, it would be under certain terms, which they seldom agree to, especially an artist on, on my level. But besides that, major labels are not interesting. It's boring. You know, it's like that to me. Like most major labels, music is like it's just not that interesting. What would those terms be? Yeah, well, what would those terms be? That they at least uh, use a little lube before they uh, give them the privilege of fucking me. <laughs> <laughs> it's usually when something doesn't, you get to a stage and then somebody asks you to do something that feels 
you know, that feels weird or, you know, just as far as um, writing songs that might have swear words in them, even just, you know, well, if you take this out, then you can get radio play. There's a song on it called Baby Dick Fucking. Warner Bros. asked us, they told us basically, if you don't take this song off, we're not going to do this record. And we thought, and uh, and we did, you know, I'm not going to say we just, you know, we considered it seriously. And then we told them no. We're like, we're not taking it off. Fuck you. Truth has never been a popular commodity. It will never sell records or books. So therefore, it's a very, it's not even a question of selling out or, or finding a corporate sponsorship. Um, they do not desire me and I do not desire them. I look at each interview as equally important, whether it's for Zine or Rolling Stone. It's like, Zines are more important than Rolling Stone in some ways. You know, Rolling Stone reaches more people, maybe, but because of the DIY thing, you know, zines are more important to a lot of us. Not really saying you're better or worse. You know, you get a kink in your neck looking up at people or looking down <laughs> at people, but if you look right across your shoulder, you know, like your peers, you no know, kinks. Like and this that. is part of Jam Mikano, doing what it takes for you to uh, try to realize uh, your uh, expression and not getting caught up in all these side issues you know, how to adjust the tiara on your prince's head you know <laughs> and this stuff you know I, I, that's fine for other folks but i think that gets in the way of uh i'm trying to uh, say what i want to say i want to i like what john coltrane said about music somebody asked him what are you trying to do with your music he says i'm just trying to uplift people and uh, he goes i work for this this liquor company and we'd love to use your stuff to uh, do this bar promotion and um, yeah that's like well you know he, he basically remembers my strip was about drinking and you know, a lot of drinking and stuff like that and partying back in college it's vastly changed now and um, I said that I said well I don't really you know I, I guess I talk about drugs and stuff a little bit and drinking but Mostly, I deal with a lot of different issues, and um, he's like, "Well, what do you mean?" And I was like, ah, "Issues of race and, and you know some politics and different things like that." And he's like, "Oh, race? Well, that's cool, man, because um, you know this liquor is going to be marketed towards black people." So <laughs> it's circus, of course, it's a sellout. Like I was telling you earlier, I wouldn't be doing historical justice to my ancestry if I didn't lie, cheat, steal, and embellish liberally. I think most writers. I'm much more into people reading what they've written than they are about making a, bunch, a zillion dollars. And so, you know, the more people are, like, I don't, the more people that read my stuff, I, I'm, that I'm happiest when more people are reading it. It's bad enough that we're so fucked up to begin with, but then to cry when the words aren't coming fast enough because you've exhausted that memory of your ex-girlfriend, your dead mother, your fucked up friends you don't really worry about, your job and the money. Always the money. Where's the fucking money? I was just like, ah, you, you don't understand. <laughs> and I just said, I'm not going to do it. And I, you know, I didn't even get in, into it really with them. I didn't want to continue the conversation. I didn't want to hear how much money they'd be offering or anything because it, it, it doesn't really matter. Because in the end, you got to sleep at night. And whether it's on a, it's on a nice, cushy, squishy bed, or a little futon, you still gotta sleep at night. <laughs> I ain't gonna sleep any better on either type of thing.